Hi, it's Bill the Handyman up here in Northern California. How y'all doing today? Today we're looking at an old school GE dryer. And so this dryer had a little problem. Basically it would not heat. It would run fine, would not heat. This dryer is probably 30 years old, 20, 25 or 30 years old, my guess. And they don't build them like this anymore. It's still usable. This is actually rated commercial. So that's, that's a good thing. So basically, we have it set on the time cycle, heat on high, no heat. Okay, so in order to get this apart, basically, there are these four screws here that hold the top panel in place. Once you take those off, the back will hinge off. Be careful because these wires are connected. There's nothing that's really holding it on too securely. Then once you get that off, then you can take the side screws off here. There's one on each side. And then the front panel will lift up. There are two screws on the bottom that sort of hold it in place. The front panel has these little forks that go around the, the, uh, the two nuts. You can loosen those if you need to. Otherwise, you just pull it back and lift it up and it'll come off. Be careful with your lid switch, your door switch wires. These can break, so be very careful with them. Once you pull the back panel off, or the front panel off, you can access the belt. You can also access the belt through the back panel on this particular model. And so what I did is, I actually took the timer apart to see if there was any problem with the timer. This timer is a unique, unique timer. It's a, basically a skeleton timer. I've never seen one quite like that before. It's, it still is in good condition. Okay, so these dryers, I've actually seen them go bad in here. There'll be a, of course this one's unplugged. Sometimes there'll be a loose connection which will create heat and fry the terminals. And this was actually the case with this. We had a terminal basically fried on us. Just like welded. And uh, this terminal was actually on the motor. The motor switch. And uh, so this has a kind of a old school motor. This thing here is this motor is probably 25 or 30 years old, heavy duty. You don't see them like this anymore. As a matter of fact, some of them actually go to DC motors now. But anyway, we had to put a new idler on it. The idler went bad on it. Um, so I put another idler on it. And what I found is this connection down here, which was uh, where the fried connection was, came apart. It was hard to see because it was like looked like it was all connected with all these other wires. But this wire here um, goes to this black wire. I believe this black wire. That black wire goes up here. Yeah, so this black wire is basically taking the brunt of the, the heat circuit. So, uh, before that, it's always good to check these terminal blocks to make sure that there's no frayed or toasted wires there or here on the heat element. And you can see visually that these connections are all good. And if you look at the heat element, 
You can put a meter on it or you can kind of look at it here and see that it's all intact. So the heat element was not the problem. And then these actually have a, in whatever, the front panel thermostat. Now I've seen the connections behind this thermostat go bad too. So in order to access this thermostat, basically you have to uh, pull, uh, well basically I think the easiest way is just to unscrew here, going through the going through the lint filter, <clears throat> and then you can expect inspect the wires. Okay, so once you've taken out your filter, uh, this little box contains the thermostat, and once you've taken well. There's a way to access it. I'm not sure exactly how to do that at this point, but basically you can access to see this, to see if the wires are burnt here. Basically you just want to do a continuity test up above where the wires come out and connect that up to that panel on the top. Yeah. Of course this one's unplugged. Sometimes there'll be a loose connection which will create heat and I'll ride the terminals. Also want to Now these wires are tricky to uh, reconnect if they're burnt out, but you can do it. I've done it and you can do it too. Um, the old uh, the thing about these uh, these old GE dryers is basically commonly these things will go out and then these things here will commonly start to squeak before they go out. And basically what it is is the drum um, grinding on bare metal. And so the other thing that goes is these skids here. This is a special kind of plastic. It's like Teflon plastic. And normally this skid will go before this skid goes. These have actually been replaced on this one. Um, I replaced them probably about um, maybe three years ago. And a family of three was using this dryer. I would say that they'd use the dryer a couple times a week. So I think that we had to replace the skids, the idler, and this this main bushing had to be replaced. But other than that, um, we have a pretty stout machine. And some people ask me what's the difference between commercial and regular machine. Um, sometimes with uh, the naked eye it's just hard to tell what the difference is exactly. It's possible with this one the commercially rated one has a bigger motor. So you know that's your tip for today. Thanks for watching. If this video helped you please send me a donation. It's Bill's Recycling Enterprises, P.O. Box 7021, Eureka, California, 95502. I give phone advice for, for a fee. If you want, give me a call, 707-443-8347, um, 9 a.m. to 9 p.m. Pacific Time. Thanks again.